Hello, uh, welcome once again on my scientific blog Discover Social Sciences. In a moment I will pass to the subject matter of the today's update. Uh, before I do a short introduction, as usually for my new viewers and new readers of my blog, uh, below the window with my face in it you can see that, uh, that string of letters discoversocialsciences.com and in the description box below the video uh, you will find the same link discoversocialsciences.com this is how it works uh, those videos i publish on youtube are coupled with written updates on my blog entitled precisely discover social sciences and uh, the coupling uh, goes by title so when you click on that link in the description box below the video it will take you to the website of my blog discover social sciences and in uh, on the website of the blog you can find a written update uh, which has the same title as the title of this video so that's how it goes together this is uh, one of those videos when I am trying something uh, something hard but let's say something valuable uh, I am trying to explain complex uh, scientific concepts and complex scientific observations without any slides at all. If you watched a few of my past videos, you could see that I used a little bit of slides, I used a, a little bit of, of visuals. Now I want to be like just me and you, my viewers, and me trying an intellectual stunt, which consists in explaining something complex and scientific in relatively simple words. So, Generally, I continue on that thread of research uh, which focuses on the connection between the growing urbanization of our species because there are more and more humans living in cities. Now it is more than half of humanity living in cities on the one hand and technological change on the other hand. In this update, empirically, I focus on the correlation, on the very strong positive correlation uh, between the degree of urbanization observable uh, in our civilization on the one hand and the intensity of patenting on the other hand. Essentially, there is a, 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 besides the trend of growing urbanization, there is a trend of uh, growing number of patent applications filed per one million people at the planetary scale. Essentially, as a species, we are patenting more and more developed science. Uh, and I'm trying to connect the two and the theoretical, um, uh, let's say, the, the theoretical background that I use in this update is a theory, a scientific theory called the swarm theory. The swarm theory uh, is based on the observation of uh, swarming animals like ants, bees, termites, wasps, hornets and uh, obser the observation of those uh, swarming species uh, is used in many fields of science, in social sciences, which I'm focusing in here, uh, but uh, it is also used, for example, in the programming of robots or in the programming of artificial neural networks. Anyway, in uh, the swarm theory, there is the assumption that uh, individual behaviors in a society, in a social structure, can be coupled in three different ways or at three different levels. It can be random coupling, correlated coupling and fixed coupling. Fixed coupling means that when I do action A, someone else is bound to perform action B in a very specific way. This is like a fixed connection between me and another person. Same for collectivities. When collectivity A does something, collectivity B is bound to do something else. That's fixed coupling. Random coupling uh, occurs when I do something 
and I can expect that another person will do something on their part, but I cannot really predict what they will do. Hmm? The reaction is random, uh, and this is what we call random coupling. In between fixed coupling and random coupling, there is that strange phenomenon, very peculiar to our culture today, which is called the correlated coupling. Correlated coupling in a swarm, in a swarming species, correlated coupling occurs, for example, when uh, a bee drops uh, a portion of pheromones in a certain place and another bee uh, is driven by those pheromones into a very specific reaction, into a very specific behavior. A behavior which, however, includes a discretionary part, that other bee that reacts to, to the pheromones left by the first bee has some flexibility, some play in their behavior. Between humans it is the same. For example, when I place this video online, uh, I expect my viewers to react somehow, yet my viewers have a large discretion in the exact way they react to that video. That's correlated coupling in behavior. In uh, the same update, I am also trying an, in another intellectual stunt, which consists in connecting directly mathematics with human behavior. And in this update, I use uh, and I explore, I try to explain the connection between statistical correlation, in this specific case, the so-called Pearson correlation, and correlated coupling of behavior in humans. Huh? Essentially, the whole concept is that I can observe any change in the behavior of another person when their behavior deviates from a certain average expected state. If they just keep doing the same all over and over again, it is like a constant speed. There is no change in their behavior. Change in behavior occurs when they deviate from their average expected state. Uh, so, a deviation from my average expected state, a change in my behavior, can provoke some kind of change, some kind of deviation from expected state in another person. That's correlated coupling in behavior. And uh, as you can read in that written version of this update, it is possible to connect the mathematics of the Pearson correlation coefficient, so the logic of local deviations from the average expected value, it is possible to connect them to correlated coupling in behavior in the lines of the swarm theory. So in this update we have a little bit of statistics translated directly into human behavior and into collective human behavior. Okay, uh, that would be all in terms of my video editorial for this update. Once again, if you go to the description box below the video, you, you find the link discoversocialsciences.com. You click on the link, it takes you to the website of my blog, Discover Social Sciences, and there you can find the written version uh, of the update that this video goes with. Huh? And the written version has the same title as this video. So that would be all in this video update. I wish you a nice reading on my blog. Uh, I encourage you strongly to subscribe to my channel and generally have fun with life. Bye.